Apologies across the board from the riders. Silverstone, Dorna, everyone is very sorry. But a, a lot of people want answers, especially the droves of people who traveled to Silverstone, paid for a race weekend, and did not get to see a race. And we're lucky to have someone join us today that can shed a bit of light on the entire situation. It's Matt Oxley, longtime MotoGP journalist. He's an Isle of Man TT winner, author, reporter, critic of all things road racing. Matt, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. You know, it really was a domino effect that led to the entire thing being canceled on the weekend. Where were you in all of this when it went down? Uh, trying to stay dry in the media center most of the time and then occasionally running out and trying to find out what was going on. And I mean, oh my God, it was just the whole thing was just a, a complete meltdown, a complete disaster. I think, you know, there were so many people at fault. Basically, everyone involved in, in the whole thing was at fault to a great, greater or lesser degree in how it was handled and how it came about. And because of that, everything just melted down. And, you know, also, and, and, and I'm not trying to let anybody off the hook here, they just could not get a break with the weather. I mean, literally on Saturday, on Sunday, you know, they, they brought, the rain was meant to come in at one o'clock on Sunday. So they moved the race forward to 11.30 and they're like 20 past 11, if the heavens opened. And then, and then they thought, oh, maybe we can reschedule it for two. And it kind of started dry, drying out and because it looked like there was going to be a window in the weather. And then the heavens opened again. So, you, you know, sometimes this happens. I mean, it shouldn't happen, you know, because a track could be raceable in the wet. But for whatever reason, and, and they're obviously conducting, uh, you know, they're looking into why that happened. The race didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the whole thing was a disaster and very badly dealt with by everyone involved. You know, it was just it was just a horrible, horrible mess. Yeah, it certainly was, Matt. Uh, and you got to see it firsthand. And I mean, there's a lot of fingers being pointed at various moving parts throughout the weekend and the lead up to the weekend. But there's even people that are blaming the riders who felt that the conditions weren't safe. They didn't feel comfortable riding in it. Now. It's important to gauge your opinion on this because you've won one of the most dangerous races in the world. Uh, how do you think the conditions were? Do you think they were too dangerous or do you think that the riders maybe were a little soft? <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it just when people say that Mark Marquez and, and um, I'm not allowed to know if I'm allowed to say this kind of thing and, and should go a pair and things like that. I, I just think, wow, you know, <laughs> you just have no idea how brave and fearless these guys are. Basically, what happened on Saturday in FP4, that set the tone for the rest of the weekend. Um, five or six, seven guys aquaplaned at the end of the hangar straight, doing about 180, 190 miles an hour. Aquaplaned. Three of them went straight on and managed to stop their bikes through the gravel before they hit the wall. Um, Rabat crashed. Rins crashed. Well, he actually jumped off the bike. Mm. You know, he when he went for the brakes at the end, he was doing 180 miles an hour. Went for the brakes. Nothing happened because he was aquaplaning, so the tire wasn't gripping the track. He realised he was going to go into the wall at 120 miles an hour, so he jumped off. Rabat was lying in the in, in, in you know or stand just standing up in the gravel when he got hit by Morvedelli's bike. I mean, it was just carnage. And Rabat, if he had been hit in the head by Morvedelli's bike that was doing 100 miles an hour probably, he wouldn't be here with us anymore. You know, and Rabat basically took a bullet for the rest of the grid because if the, if what if what happened in FP4 hadn't happened, and then the rain had come down just before the start on on Sunday, and everybody had gone out unaware of the aquaplaning problems, you would have had 24 riders heading down Hangar Straight at 180 miles an hour, all jostling for position like they do, and all going for the brakes and aquaplaning. I mean, you just cannot even begin. To imagine how bad that would have been, you know, I think, I think there was a good, ch good chance we would have lost several riders. Yeah. Because you know, if you have ten guys going down in a heap at 150, 160 miles an hour, that's just not going to end well. So, but basically, to anybody who says they weren't manning up, I just, I, I don't, don't know what to say to them. Basically. Yeah, you just, just basically if, if, shake your head, if, right? If, yeah. If, yeah, if, I just think, right, if, if you really think these guys are not the bravest motorcycle riders mm -hmm. in the world, and I'd include the TT guys in that because it's a different kind of risk and so on. But basically, you know, these guys are doing 220 miles an hour on motorcycles, handlebar to handlebar. You know, anything can go very wrong, even in the best conditions. So 
if the riders decide not to race, then you don't race because it's their lives. It's nobody else's life. And I don't care how many millions of pounds they're getting paid. If they believe the, the, the conditions are too dangerous, they're too dangerous because yeah. these guys want to race. They love racing, even in the in, in the wet. They love it. They Some of them wanted to ride, but, you know, most of them realized that if you aquaplane, you can't do anything. You know, you might be the most talented rider in the world. It's like hitting a patch of ice, black ice at 170 miles an hour. It's just, you know, however skilled you are, you're going to crash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, in your opinion, needs to happen moving forward to make sure that something like this isn't going to happen again, is not going to be repeated? Well, first of all, you know, the circuit needs to be in a better condition. And it all comes back to that. Um, that was the only real problem, really. Um, and then the system melted down as a result of that. Um, and, I mean, I've been in these situations before at other races, you know, a long time ago. And, and it's just chaos ensues because, you know, everybody thinks, well, maybe we can, you know, maybe the rain will go in, in two hours and we can start again, or maybe it'll, it won't be, in, you know. So this is not a new thing. In fact, a month before, a few weeks before um, the, the Silverstone Grand Prix, I took my family over to Northern Ireland to watch a, a road race over there at Armoy. And that's, we went over there for one day, well, for three days. We went over there and we got to the racetrack and we didn't see a wheel turn all day because it was raining. The marshal had been badly hurt, in a, you know, a, a traveling marshal had been badly hurt in an accident. And we stood there all day in the, in the pouring rain, waiting for something to happen and nothing happened. And that, you know, this is motorcycle racing. It happens sometimes. You, mm -hmm. you can't send people out whatever the conditions. That's what used to happen in the old days. I and mean, in the old days, a lot of people used to die because they did what they were told when they should have just said to the promoters, we're not doing it, you know. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Really great to get your perspective. Thank you. All right, Matt Oxley, and you can read his weekly MotoGP mutterings on motorsportmagazine.com and check out his latest book, Speed, The One Genuinely Modern Pleasure, at mattoxley.com. And after shaking off the chill of Silverstone, it's off to Misano for just over a week from now for round lucky number 13, hoping for more luck this time around. And at least for some, like Jorge Lorenzo and Valentino Rossi, who have three Premier Class wins each at the circuit.